students i am tulika banerji today i bring you the next learning episode on behalf of the content writers dr gs sodi and dipika bhandari on an important unit of paper crime and society that is white collar crime in this episode we will discuss what are white collar crimes their different elements and classification we will also discuss about the effects of white collar crime the social response towards these types of crimes and the criminals associated with these crimes lastly we will conclude this learning episode with the discussion of the status of white collar crimes in india so dear students let's start our module with a look at what we are going to learn today first is introduction then elements of white collar crimes classification of white collar crimes effects of white collar crimes social response laws against white collar crimes white collar crimes in india and lastly the conclusion let us begin this learning episode by learning about the concept of white collar crimes edwin h sutherland in 1939 introduced and popularized the term white collar crimes according to him it was a crime committed by the persons of respectability and high social status in the course of their occupation it could also be explained as the financially motivated non violent crimes committed by business and government professionals almost a century ago dada bhai naroji was asked why was india poor and backward and notwithstanding its immense natural and human resources he tried to search the answer after devoting his valuable time energy and restless efforts to look into government publications and archival materials both in india and in britain he found that india was poor not because its people were lazy but owing to the fact that there a large part of what they were producing was being drained away by the foreign rulers through an intricate mechanism and was thus not available either for consumption or capital accumulation in india thus the crime of robbery was being regularly committed by foreign rulers against the people of india protected under the roof of law in today's scenario it has taken a wider role in every area of business such as commonwealth games cricket colgate and wapum fraud etc the motives of people involved in such type of crimes are only to multiply their financial gains the loopholes protect these professionals in administrative and legal system and by getting support from the government indirectly white collar crime includes misinterpretation in advertising violation of labor laws violation of copyright and patent laws and financial manipulations however all crimes committed by high status people are not white collar crimes the crime which is specifically job oriented that is which occurs during the course of a person's professional time is attributed as a white collar crime a rich businessman who criminally assaults his lady secretary commits a crime but not an occupational crime to be termed as a white collar crime sutherland's emphasis on the high social status of the offender which results in the exclusion of a host of other occupation related crimes that are similar to white collar crimes but are committed by the lower class people for example illegalities such as adulteration of milk by a milkman for public consumption making unnecessary repairs to radio and television sets taking out gas from the gas cylinder by the workman and so on are all occupational crimes but not white collar crimes hence the word that is preferred today for crime that is motivated by a person's legitimate occupation and context is occupational crime and not a white collar crime let us learn about the different elements of white collar crimes in our next section several elements can be discerned in occupational crime these are it involves violation of legal codes it takes place directly or indirectly in connection with a legitimate occupation 
the crime is not against a specific individual or a firm but is against the society at large there is therefore no specific victim who could complain it aims at gaining money earlier only a person of high status committing this crime was considered a white collar criminal but now a person of any class violating law in the course of occupational activity is described as an occupational offender the offender does not regard himself as a criminal but considers himself as a respectable citizen at the most he regards himself a law breaker whose act has no victim the organization engaged in occupational crime generally selects that crime which involves high stakes but carries the most negligible danger of detection and identification further it is a crime against which the victims are least likely to fight the effect of this crime is much more serious for society than an ordinary crime the various types of white collar crimes include cyber crimes forgery copyright infringement insider trading money laundering etc in legal profession with the increasing commercial relationship among the corporates insurance and banking agencies the nature of the capitalist economy started becoming complex with time thus the ever growing complexities paved way for the typical legal convulsions related to property rights and other matters pertaining to the legal field and gave birth to a new class of professional advocates who in the name of providing justice started abetting the wrong and thereby pursued their own narrow interest these groups of advocates forgot the holy oath of serving the society and started searching for the legal loopholes and focused mainly on helping the rich entrepreneurs to grow richer hence extensive studies were carried out by these persons just to save themselves and other rich corporate personalities from tax evasion therefore only the illegal means involved in tax evasion gets sorted out there are very frequent instances of unscrupulous and unethical practices such as fabricating false evidence engaging professional witnesses thereby violating ethical standards of legal profession and dilatory tactics in agreement with the ministerial staff of the courts if we talk in the field of engineering today engineers are also involved in white collar crimes we often find cases of illegal dealings with suppliers contractors passing of substandard works and maintenance of bogus reports of labor works they financially earn more for their low grade works from the contractors than they could earn for the genuine work therefore many of them out of the greed of earning more and more play dangerously with thousands of life of the individuals best example is the collapsing of foot over bridge 12 days before the opening of commonwealth games in the year 2010 next if we are talking in the field of medical in india the white collar crimes are so widespread that it does not confine itself in the legal arena similar unfortunate instances can be drawn from other professions too like that of medical practitioners engineers educationists businessmen politicians and the list goes on in the medical field doctors are very often involved in the issuance of false certificates selling out samples of medicines and drugs and even adulterated drugs and carrying out illegitimate abortions they often adopt dilatory tactics in providing treatment to their patients with a menstrua to extract huge amount of money even if the person has a good practice record in the very famous nithari case the peak level of brutal character was shown by the medical professionals who proved that how much they reach for making money misleading and fake advertisements claiming absolute cure is also one of the frequent malpractices being carried out in the medical profession the problem lies in the fact that they often escape punishment since they cannot be said to have violated the law but by violating the spirit of law they commit crimes 
which are truly antisocial and create enormous damage to the public health and safety at large. Next, if we take a white collar crimes in the field of education. The educational institutions do come in the league to operate with impunity. A nastier role is played by the private institutions that are least bothered in providing the education but only concentrate on making business at the cost of the children's future. Even rackets operate in these institutions for procuring students to appear in examinations on the basis of manipulated eligibility certificates, thereby damaging the standard of education in India. When it comes to the government institutions, the teachers and staffs of the institutions are often found to be involved in corrupt practices. Teachers often drag students for private tuitions and even go to the extent of blackmailing them of ruining their future if they deny doing so. Next, in the corporate sector. According to a research, it was observed that only handful instances of white collar crimes are reported in day to day life by certain number of people in the course of their profession. The major role in committing white collar crimes is played by the business tycoons and politicians whose greed and wants are perhaps endless. This greed makes them do nasty things which come under the focus of media and in the major scandals during the thorough investigation, the unlawful involvement of the political parties are often highlighted. So far as the businessmen are concerned, their acts of white collar crimes go beyond count. They are termed as corporate criminals, who more often than not are involved in illegal contracts, combination and conspiracies of trade restraints, unfair labor practices, selling adulterated foods and drugs, bribing public officials, so on and so forth. They take advantage of the corporate wheel and indulge in a number of crimes. Next is universal. When the work is totally planned and carried out in such a manner that nobody can point out the finger, implies that it is a highly technological and advanced fraud, which can be found out later as a bigger scam. These scams evoke serious concern and have a greater impact to the national security and governance. Violation of foreign exchange regulations and import and export laws are frequently resorted for the sake of huge profits. Let us now learn about the different effects of white collar crimes in our next section. Its economic effect or the financial loss to society is more serious than ordinary economic crimes committed by persons of the lower socio-economic class. The average loss per theft or burglary is less than rupees 5000, while theft or burglary which yields as much as rupees 50,000 or so is rare and one which yields a lakh rupee or more is still rarer. On the other hand, embezzlements and frauds of lakhs and millions of rupees committed by business organizations, corporations, trust and companies are reported in a single year. While ordinary crimes cause some inconvenience to the victims and other serious crimes cause general community disturbance, the white collar crimes on the other hand spread feelings of distress, lower public morale and result in social disorganization. Although a very large number of white collar crimes are committed in the society, yet only a few of the white collar offenders are prosecuted and punished. A large number go scot free because of their economic and social influence. Even the criminal court are tolerant towards persons accused of white collar crimes. The attempts done for the protection to society against white collar crime is insufficient because the efforts to make the criminal law more effective in dealing with white collar crimes are often blocked by vested interest of the influential violators. Further, the absence of an adequate knowledge regarding white collar crime contributes to a distortion of the criminological theories of causation since criminologist courts and prisons. We will now learn about the social response and criticism towards the white collar crimes. Mm -hmm. 
Why is the societal reaction to white collar criminal different from its reaction to a conventional criminal? This is because most of the laws violated by them are not part of the criminal codes as the bulk of white collar legislation regulates business and professional activities and administration processes. Sutherland offers three explanations for laying emphasis on administrative rather than judicial agencies, the status of the given occupation, the general trend away from punishment and the relative lack of resentment of the public against white collar crimes. Why is the labeling of criminal status applied to conventional offenders withheld from white collar criminals? One, detection of white collar criminal is highly problematic. Two, the public and the judges are reluctant to prosecute the white collar criminals because of the general repute of the occupation and because of the fear that prosecution for an offence embedded in the occupational system will have adverse effect on the vital services that the occupation provides to community. And lastly, it is believed that unlike conventional criminal of the lower class, the white collar criminal of the middle and upper classes are free of criminality. As such, even though theoretically equal justice calls for similar degree of punishment for conventional and white collar offenders alike, yet a punishment for intensity of punishment is a desirable policy. Next is criticism of white collar crime. White collar crimes are a non-legal term which refers to certain criminal acts, but it does not specifically name the criminal acts to which it has reference. It refers to a certain type of person, namely a member of the upper socio-economic class, but does not provide a specific criteria by which the social class of the person involved can be determined. The criminal law in defining the acts that are usually referred by the term white collar crime does not make any distinction regarding the social class offenders. Thus, there is no official source of criminal statistics to estimate the incidence of white collar crime. There are imperfection in the criminal law and its procedure. The remedy for this is not to disregard the preventive devices it has created to shield the innocent. The correct approach to this crime lies in redefining occupational crime in the improvement of the criminal law in the stricter enforcement of its provisions and in the vigorous but unbiased and impartial prosecution of the accused. Our next section deals with the laws against the white collar crimes. There are various acts and legislations in India to control socio-economic offences. Income Tax Act of 1961, Customs Act of 1962, Central Excise Act of 1944, NDPS Act of 1985, Companies Act of 1956, Prevention of Corruption Act 1956, Money Laundering Act, Arms Act of 1959, IPR laws such as Copyright Act, Patent Act, etc. For checking cybercrime, IT Act was formed. Agencies like CBI, Income Tax, RBI, Lok Ayukta, etc. are present to keep a check on the white collar crimes. Some of the sections of IPC formed against white collar crimes are Section 168, offence defined under this section as public servant unlawfully engaging in trade and the punishment for this is simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both. Under section 169, the offence committed is by the public servant unlawfully buying or bidding for property and the punishment given is a simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to two years or with fine or with both and the property if purchased shall be confiscated. Under section 171b, offence for bribery has been defined. Under section 171c, the offence is for undue influence at elections. Under section 171e, the offence is for punishment for bribery and the punishment given 
is an imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to one year or fine or both. Under section 171F, punishment for undue influence or personation at an election. Punishment given for this is imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both. Under section 171H, offence is illegal payments in connection with elections and the punishment is a fine of rupees 500. Under section 274, offence is adulteration of drugs and the punishment given is an imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 6 months or with fine which may extend to 1000 rupees or with both. Various other sections and laws have been formed to fight against white collar crimes. The last section of this learning episode deals with the status of white collar crimes in India. The 2010 to 2011 annual Global Fraud Survey report of crawl conducted by Economist Intelligence Unit gives certain unexpected results. Fraud continues to be a big problem worldwide and more so in India. Of the companies surveyed, globally 75% reported experiencing fraud during the year. Though the figure has reduced in comparison to previous years 88%, the situation is still dismal. In India, the situation is disastrous with 84% organizations reporting that they suffered from fraud during the year. It is a wake-up fall for India, as it ranked second worldwide after Africa and shares the position with China. The estimated figure given in the report is that globally organizations suffered 2.1% revenue loss due to fraud. But for India, the percentage is higher at 2.4%. According to the report, further analysis says that 18% of the companies reported an earning loss of more than 4%. All of these companies are reporting corruption, bribery, money laundering and regulatory breaches frequently. This is all due to the lack of fraud prevention and investigating measures. Mostly, Indian companies are working on old patterns and are ill-prepared to fight the fraud and corruption. That is why they need to be trained and focus on the fraudulent investigatory measures and appoint the fraud investigators or forensic investigators in their companies or as a part of the risk management teams. Huge investments are planned to improve the infrastructure which go unutilized appropriately since the greed of the people is never satisfied. The government and private sector post-independence never had it so good. With liberalization, the foreign investment flow increased. The sudden gush in economy also resulted in higher greed and corruption sought. Several cases show how senior level politicians and business heads who were much revered and respected compromised with their ethics. Further, the report reveals that 78% of the Indian organizations have stated that they are highly or moderately vulnerable to corruption. Now, dear students, let us conclude this lecture. Edwin H. Sutherland in the year 1939 describes white collar crimes as a crime committed by the persons of respectability and high social status in the course of their occupation. These types of crimes have far edged effects on the development of the society and the country as a whole. These are spread in varied sectors such as corporate, education, medicine, technological, etc even though these types of crimes are difficult to totally map. There are certain laws and respective punishments written in the IPC to deal with these crimes and prevent them from occurring. Now, this is time for your self-study. If you want to learn more for enhancing your knowledge, 
you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for assignments, MCQs, quizzes and LORs and other materials. Till then, keep studying and goodbye.